So many people today can't handle difficult words from God. I am reminded of when Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they said, this is a hard saying, Jesus. Basically what they're saying in John chapter six to Jesus is just heal us, would you? And just feed us. Don't get heavy. And the Bible says they all left. These were all followers of Jesus. And let me remind everyone here that when Jesus experienced the crowd leaving, and I say this to pastors around the world, when Jesus experienced the loss of the crowd, when they walked out of the stadium, when they walked out of the arena, when they walked out of their church, he did not chase after them. As a matter of fact, he stood his ground. Jesus will not change his teaching for anyone. And then he turned to his disciples and said, how about you boys? Are you with me or not? And I promise you, my friend, if they had said, you know, Lord, it's been okay up to this point, but this is a little tough to swallow. I think we're going to rethink. I'm going to go back to fishing. I'm going to go back to tax collecting. I'm going to go back to doing this. This is a little tough. Jesus would have walked out by himself. He's not going to change his message to accommodate the crowd. Isaiah 30 verse 9. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Get out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. They were saying, flatter us. Flatter us. Tell us something good about us. Now there is a term that has become popular over the last 10 years. We've all heard it. It has to do with what is attractive to the sight. And that term is eye candy. Lots of lights. Lots of spectacle, lots of fun, pleasant to the eyes. The scripture we just read serve as a warning. They are describing a trend of teaching that could easily fall under the category of ear candy. This would be words that are flowing from pulpits all over America that cause the hearers to feel good and want more. We've all heard the song that talks about a spoonful of sugar helping the medicine go down. That may be true, but today in the spiritual sense, there is no medicine. The doctors of the word, the clergy are afraid to prescribe the very medicine that was made available from heaven's pharmacy 2,000 years ago, sin was the disease. The blood was the cure. Repentance was God's only method of putting the two together. It's not sweet. For Jesus, it was a bitter cup. It wasn't sweet when the crown of thorns was pressed upon his head and blood spilled into his eyes. It wasn't sweet when they took a whip of leather holding pieces of glass or stone and shredded his back like a farmer would plow a field. It wasn't sweet when they blindfolded him, slapped his face and mocked his deity. It wasn't sweet when they placed a beam on his raw, exposed shoulders, forcing him down Calvary's road. It wasn't sweet when he fell under the load. It wasn't sweet when they laid his body on the beams and pierced his hands and feet. It wasn't sweet when the cross dropped in the hole and ripped even further the flesh that had just been pierced. It wasn't sweet when he lifted his voice and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It wasn't sweet when he pierced the heavens with these agonizing words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm speaking to you of the gospel story. 
the penetrating truth of what Jesus Christ had to endure so we could be adopted into his family. I say unashamedly today, without reservation, pastor, if you are not experiencing persecution from those who are under your voice, then you are not preaching the truth. The word of God offends. Always has, always will. I believe one of the many reasons ministers and churches today have become popular is simply because they've lost the sting of the story. It's as if everyone is lured to this gigantic honey-laden beehive with no consequences of being stung. Why? There are no warrior bees watching the hive. It's all sugar. Just scoop some in your hand and slop it down. The Bible says they will not endure sound doctrine. To endure means they will not put up with it. Sound doctrine means healthful, wholesome doctrine. It's not talking about sugar. Woe unto me, Paul said, if I don't preach the gospel. For necessity is laid upon me, Paul said. You see, my friend, nobody wants the disciples to leave. So we water it down to keep them close. Everyone wants to keep their following. Everyone wants to grow their audience. Everyone wants to increase their mailing list. Oh, the money won't come in if you offend the givers. They heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They seek teaching that will gratify their carnal desires. They want you to deal gently with their evil ways. Please don't call it sin, pastor. All I did was make a mistake. I've slipped up a little bit. It's not that bad. Tell me I'm wonderful. Tell me I'm a winner. Give me the seven steps to being successful. Give me some sugar. Come here, pastor. Just give me some sugar. Kiss me, pastor. Kiss me. Give me something sweet. I want to tell you the devil's most favorite time of the week, Sunday morning. Do you want to know why? Because the devil knows if he can get as many people to church as possible so they'll hear a sugar-coated, lukewarm, relevant message from some internet pastor, then they'll come in for that 45-minute service, and the message is only about 20, 25 minutes. They'll come in, and what happens, they got this little itch, because everyone has itches. They have, everyone has this religious itch, and they'll scratch it. And the pastor will go, you're fine, everything's good, everything's okay, oh, oh. And they'll walk out and feel good about themselves. Churches all over the Metroplex are filled up today for this very reason. Never confronted! Never spoken to. Never a heart-to-heart -heart riveting message that can change their lives. Rather, some mamby-pamby message on how to cope. When 90% of the problems come from sinful lifestyles. What are you serving up, pastor? Why are you afraid to speak of the blood and the cross? Why has the word sin and its counterpart, repent, been deleted from your vocabulary? What are you afraid of? Who do you not want to offend? Who are you trying to lead? And where are you leading them? Eat this, it'll make you healthy, make you better. Kill them, pastor. Hungry souls that need a fresh cutting word from the heart of God. They opened their mouths, received a soft, easy to digest, spoon-fed, mediocre meal from the latest candy lace Christian cookbook. Instead of receiving a fresh meal from the bakery of heaven, they receive a cream-filled pastry from the bakery of hedonism. God wants you to be happy, happy, happy. This is the nonsense that's being preached. These are the fables that are being preached. Don't worry about living holy, holy, holy. He wants you happy, happy, happy. God wants you to live a life of luxury rather than a life of sacrifice. God doesn't want you to deny yourself anything. Forget about laying it all down, picking up your cross and following him. God wants you to drink from the cup of pleasure rather than be willing to drink from a cup of pain. 
God wants you to live lives of popularity rather than suffer any kind of persecution. The central message of the cross has been traded for a soothing massage by the clergy. Rather than young pastors falling on their faces, going after God and receiving fresh bread from heaven, they're running to the internet, ordering slick how-to manuals, filling their God-starved souls with sugar. They step from the playroom to the pulpit and feed an anemic congregation a diet of nonsense. Gimme some sugar. 